Hey, I'm Scott. And I'm Chris. And this is Doxologic, where we help you think with your Bible. All right, it's a good day for another mailbag episode on Doxologic. As usual, Scott and Chris, hello. Hello. Hi. Good to see you. Good to That's see perky. you. I know. <laughs> hello. Welcome to Almost Fall. It's starting to... Yeah. Mornings are cooler. I've been really enjoying that, and it's uh, it's a good time of year. Mm. Yeah, I was li- when you said good to see you. I literally hadn't seen you mm. all day, except it's for in the true. parking lot. I saw you. <laughs> I was leaving, and you were arriving. That's yeah. right. Just yeah. a few hours ago, before Scott and I started sitting yeah. and l- just yeah. getting after it. Yep. We see you less now. That's true. And yet somehow we're very Scott, sad about and it. And yet somehow we still managed to uh, do the blue striped shirt thing together. Oh today. wow! But one of us is tucked in. Quite and remarkable. One of us is not tucked in. What was? In. I'm not at the moment. When no, I come I was, to Doxa, I, was I have bummed. to untuck. No, you do not. No, I know. you do not. Do you do? It should be a requirement oh, that you stay <laughs> tucked in. Yeah, we're a like really formal place. Mm-hmm. So Write it down. Tuck as a in your shirt. I dare if you. Come you. To visit. I dare you. You won't. Yeah. Oh, I could write in the yeah. policy. Oh, could, no. I Don't I threaten the HR director with... Uh, I could update uh, our dress code. Yeah. Yeah. Just for a one-liner. And Chris Ritter must are, wear suit and tie. If you are the head of school. That's great. On the property. <laughs> That's funny. Right up. All right. Um, let's do it. Let's walk through some of these questions. The first one reads like this. My parents are not believers. How do I honor the command to honor my parents? And to what extent does this go with them? It's a fair question. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I mean, it's Exodus a, 20, it's a ten, Deuteronomy. It's a 10th. It is a 10 commandment. Uh, is that the fifth or sixth one? It's one of fifth. the two, right? Is that the fifth? Right after the... Come on, Sabbath. Right? Get there right after Sabbath, right? Like, I'll just I'll read it for the sake of it. The original. Which one are you going to read? Oh, Ex- not the second giving of the law one? I was going to do Exodus 20, oh if I may. <laughs> Is that okay? Wow. <laughs> Would you like me to read another one? What a one? mistake, huh? <laughs> oh just kidding. Just kidding. You are believe- you turned to the right page? <laughs> Can you believe yes, this guy? Right, the right page. <laughs> Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has is giving you. That's Exodus 20. I, would you like to turn to the second giving of the? <laughs> no, go, you can do it. No, so I'm so, in the okay. New Testament now. Okay, great. Let's we can just go there as well. Uh, that's always great. The question <laughs> is a difficult one because part of it's not only um, regarding unbelieving parents, but also as you get older and they get older, what level of like children was this for versus, mm-hmm. you know, regardless in, in their old age and as you become an adult and should leave and cleave, assume, assuming you get married, which shouldn't be totally assumed, but let's just say you do get married, you're in a new family establishment, right? Mm-hmm. That's God creating a new family, not to the uh, utter abandonment of your natural family by way of the you know the husband and the wife, but the the honor it does change its its a look at the very least. Your obligation in terms of obedience, you know, is an interesting part about that as well. Um, so a lot of these ad, not only admonitions but the commandments um, are are to are to children. And so I just setting it up to say, yeah, it's a fair question. Is a child even writing this in? Is maybe some of it right? Mm, yeah. So we can answer it for. Could be a fourteen-year-old, right. could be a twenty-five-year-old, or a fifty-year-old. Exactly, literally, right? Exactly. And yeah. I think it, the application does shift depending on if you're fifty mm-hmm. or you're eight. You know, kind of thing. An Let eight-year-old me... listening to Doctor Logic would be impressive. Yeah. You know, an eight-year-old I, listening. To I want Doxologic? you to believe it could happen, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> I really do. All right. Let me let me add a few uh, <laughs> verses um, to this. So Ephesians six builds off of the principle of the law. Um, Verse 1, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Okay, so obey your parents in the Lord. So we don't want to get away from honor your father and mother, has an element of reverence, submission, obedience. But Paul's helpful here in saying, obey your parents in the Lord. So I think one of the things that with an unbelieving set of parents that you would have to be more mindful of, and it's not that Christian parents do everything right uh, or in accordance with 
what is right before the Lord, but is you're going to have to be more mindful of things that aren't of the Lord or in the Lord, right? Those decisions um, that are disobedient to God's word are things that the uh, Christian with un- non-Christian parents has to be more mindful of, right? That your obedience is consistent with that which is honoring to the Lord himself. And I think that's helpful to kind of hem it in a little bit. It's going to be challenging in some ways because I would say that you don't want to use that as an excuse either to not just properly honor your father and mother. I think in some sense, it's really do that in so far as you can do it should be the goal, right? Not figuring out how little do I have to do that, but really how much can I do that and yet not violate what scripture would say I should not be doing, right? And if your parents are... uh pressing you in a direction where your honoring of them would be dishonor to God, then I think that's a line you have to draw Yeah, according good. to Ephesians 6, 1. I think, too, as you get older, um, you a couple of things come to mind. One would be something like politeness, that, that you are going to be polite to your unbelieving parents. And uh, on a sort of the same idea, therefore you refuse to disparage them. You know, even if their character is, because you could have an unbelieving family, unbelieving parents that are overall genuinely quite kind people and even pretty supportive and kind of, in a sense, neutral. They're not like attacking your faith. That does happen at times, but but at the very least, um, it's it's a politeness toward them because they are the parents God gave to you. You're the child that God gave to them, and as a Christian now, you're you're thinking differently, and so you're refusing to disparage them, even in private, mm-hmm. is one thing I would just propose that. How does that look? Well, you're not going to... Whether if you have kids now, and they're grandparents, and you're just not going to be um, uh, talking down either to them, of course, but also about them will be one. One way to just seek to honor them without like lying and acting like they're godly and all these things, but yeah, politeness and refusing to disparage. Yeah. Um, Colossians uh, 3 has another passage that's kind of a parallel passage to Ephesians 6. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord, right? So the language is even stronger. And so Mm -hmm. that's the idea of we're not trying to skirt back from obedience. Let's go as far as we can go without dishonoring the Lord, right? And I I think about it. I have experience with this because my own dad was was not a believer. And um, each set of non-believing parents can have different hurdles to to jump Mm -hmm. through or over. Um, But when you recognize that, okay, I, I am going to be deferential, there's quite a bit you can honor your... your I, I was quite a bit I felt like I could honor my father with, even in the way that I thought he was wrong about some things, doing that in an honorable way, right? Where you acknowledge him as your dad, you didn't talk to him as a peer, or you especially didn't talk to him as one where you're over the top of him. You 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 observe the, the distinction between father and son, even while bringing up, having good conversations with my dad about even the truth of scripture that he didn't believe in, but how you handle that, how you talk about that, um, how you make him feel about those things are are just even practical ways where like, okay, sparks could fly there, but there's a way to honor him even in those Mm. situations Mm. as well. So um, yeah. So I think that probably speaks into it enough for the listener. I'd say so. Thanks guys.